Hi everybody, welcome back to another PUBG strategies and tactics analysis video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a duo chicken dinner victory I got with the Colonel um, on Miramar. And what's interesting about this one is it's a hard shift uh, type uh, circle, um, which means that um, we go one way um, and the circle goes the other way. Um, so let's just have a quick look on here. So this is the initial flight path, as you can see. Let me just turn the volume down slightly so it doesn't interfere with what we're trying to do. So the, we've got an east to west uh, flight path. So my guide to everybody is, you know, choose somewhere in the second half of the flight path if you can, if you can uh, perpendicular, so at right angles away, um, and try and fly somewhere where there aren't that isn't named okay because because what happens is people as you're flying along they will like to in this case say with miramar they'll love to drop at los leones uh chimanchera power grid san martin the hacienda de la patron obviously picardo so i would look at this and go okay so maybe not el pozo because that's named don't really we could go to feldemar but it's quite close so people could jump there so the obvious one here is really up to uh alacobriera i think it's called um, and this is where we go. So I'll tend to put a marker down, um, and we'll uh, we'll fly up this way again. The idea behind this is to get far enough away from any potential enemies so that we don't have those early game engagements, which really are a bit of a time cost because the server is working hard. It's got you know 100 players on it, um, and so there could be lag, there could be desync, and in any gunfight, there's always a chance you're going to lose. So it may sound a bit obvious, but the way to avoid losing gunfights is, is not to get involved in the first place a, a lot of the time. So we um, decide to go to the north, uh, me and the colonel, um, and then we kind of land, uh, jump into vehicles, and go even further north. So this is another reason why you tend to choose roads to fly over, because that way you can find a vehicle. Because the catch with um, this sort of uh, tactic is if you get a... Um, hard shift circle so this this is basically a hard shift circle so what you can see is our plan is to go north here um, and loot around this area but the circle has popped far ooh, the circle has popped far to the south um, so we're going to have a long way to go now in this case you really need to have a vehicle if you don't have a vehicle on Miramar um, f forget it you can't run that far <laughs> it'd be very very difficult you need a lot of meds to to stay alive so we pick up vehicles, and then looking at the circle, so the plan already in my head would be, let's loot up safely, you get loads of time on Miramar, and then make our way south uh, on the road and off-road, avoiding the named areas, to try and end up on the quiet side of the circle. So at the moment, because it was an east-to-west flight path, like this, the hot area of the circle is in the middle, isn't it? Kind of, kind of along this bit. And so people are going to be moving sort of this direction. And so this whole section here of the map is going to be very, very busy with people. People who have dropped in Los Leones or Chimachera, you know, they, or Picardo, they're just going to be staying there and killing each other and, and getting looted up. But chances are, down here on the south coast, there will be very few people. So the plan would be to loot up and then eventually um, make our way down down that way which is kind of uh, kind of what we do um in fact what we do is after we've looted up um where we are at this area here um we decide to go even further north to hit a couple of warehouses to you know pick up some uh, some good stuff the kind of kit i'm looking out for is <laughs> getting in the back of a truck by mistake there the kind of kit i'm looking out for is you, you know my, my, my favorite setup would be something like um a barrel um, with a SKS or an SLR as my uh, long range weapon, um, level 2 everything at least, um, 3 med packs, um, 3 smokes um, 3 energy drink, 3, three painkillers about 200 rounds of ammunition is normally enough, what you'll see actually in this game as well is that I swap to the spotter scope with the SCAR um, if, if there's no barrel um, and I'm really getting 556 five, stuff the SCAR would be, whoop, the SCAR <laughs> <laughs> the scar would be my choice the scar hits much much harder than the m4 and i've had plenty of gunfights that i've won with the scar in a similar way that i've won with the uh, with with the barrel so anyway so we get looted up um and then we start uh, heading south um and as you can see you know we've got a long way to go we're all the way up here and we've got to follow our way around now now you've got to be careful on miramar because 
these dark areas, they tend to be steep hills. So you've got to make sure you don't roll the vehicle so you can make your way south, which we, we tend to do. And this is quite uh, this is quite a learning point. Now, I don't play um, squads or duos very often. I should play more with, with my uh, my PUBG buddies, but, but I tend to, cause tend to play a lot of solos. And well, look what happens. As we're driving south and we're merrily chatting away, I completely ignore the fact that I'm about to die. Look at my health bar down there. I'm literally about to die and get knocked in the blue and the colonel would have to come and get me. Luckily, um, I choose a med kit. Now, I should have choose the first aid kit in this because the first aid kit gets applied quicker than the med kit. But luckily, um, it, it, <laughs> look how close it is. I managed to uh, heal up. I was pro my health must have been very, very close. And then we can get into the blue, and we can kind of carry on our journey south. Now the plan here would be to get you know right down to the south coast. Um, let's have a look. So yeah, so we carry on going. Um, the colonel jumped onto my little buggy, and we kind of end up at this um, little. Um, settlement down near the south coast uh, you can see the south coast to to our left here again just checking the doors as we pull up checking for vehicles that sort of stuff just to kind of see see what else we can uh, we can find just to kind of finish out our loadouts with things like level three vests um silencers you know, you know that kind of thing um at this point notice it's 16 minutes 24 seconds in and we still haven't come across any enemies at all and that's the you could call it a disadvantage of this type of tactics is that it is very quiet. You're really playing for the top 10. You're playing to get into the top 10 and, and avoid early uh, early gunfights. Um, and then um, I do swap. Now, so what you're seeing here is I found a spotting scope. And what I do is I swap um, my... In fact, let's just go back a little bit so you can see what I do. I swap my six times from my M14 over to the SCAR and I put a canted sight on the SCAR. This means that you know, you've know you got the option of, of, a, of a red dot uh, close up and then you can go to sort of single fire and, and go canted, uh, flip the gun over and, and shoot that way. The disadvantage is that the canted sight, the canted red dot when you tip the t gun over to use it close quarters, the view isn't that great. The gun kind of blocks a lot of the view. So it's not as effective as a normal hollow or normal red dot or normal two times. But it does give you that ability to, to run with something like the spotter scope as well. So we kind of, we get looted up um, and then we uh, head west. And I'll, what you'll see here is me using the, the spotter scope. So the colonel is ahead of me here as we're heading west. Um, uh, and you can see we've got, just checking for open doors and then the, that, that's the beauty you see there of the spotting scope these guys are extreme range if they weren't moving so they were just lying down or behind a tree i wouldn't see them now if they were moving i might see them as dots and because our eyes are very good at picking up moving objects but with a spotting scope all you have to do is pass the scope over the area and if they're in this bigger area around the outside of the spotting scope they'll get a white tag where you can then see them and then if you put the center of the spotting scope over them they'll turn red and they will then appear on your um teammates uh, view as well this is in this is incredibly overpowered if you ask me <laughs> it's great fun but it enables you to quickly scan a large area without really looking hard because the spotting scope will do the job for you and, and bring it up and i think if i were to balance the spotting scope i would probably say you need to they need to have a speed mechanic in it where when you get it out and move it around if you're moving it around too fast it doesn't spot enemies you know you have to sort of slowly drag it over um, but these guys are a long way away, um, but we can pick them up um, easy enough. Um, so, you know, very, very powerful indeed. Um, now, we're moving west again, and the colonel is up on top of this little ramp. Oh, let's go full screen. Um, and he spotted someone, and then he gets the first, uh, well, our first kill. There we go. Nice uh, headshot with an M24, I think. Now, as you can see, we're by the island entrance to the uh, the eastern entrance to the island on Miramar. So, there's the dead body, and you'll see again me scanning around looking for enemies. There we go. So I pick again. I probably wouldn't have seen those guys if I hadn't used the spotting scope again. I can pick them up. So the kind of the uh, tactical information we get in here is the circle is popping to our west, um, and so these guys are probably going to be coming across this bridge here. 
Um, so, you know, that's handy to know. Again, just looking out for anybody who's around, keeping an eye on them, and then just communicating with, uh, with the colonel. Um, and as we're heading west, um, we see, or the colonel sees uh, someone coming out of the blue. There we go, so he's engaging someone. And what you'll see here is you'll see the scar in action. So there we go. So you see the six times there, and then we've I've got the um, the canter uh, the cantilever sight uh, in operation. But you see how small it is, and the fact that six times blocks up a lot of a lot of our view. So you'll see actually in the last five minutes of the video when we're into the meat and potatoes of winning the chicken dinner, I actually bin the six times and I put an ordinary uh, scope on it um, because uh, at that point everything's probably going to be um, close range. So we get the knock on this chap. Try and get a few bullets into this guy. Um, switch to the six times. I mean, this guy's in the blue. He's going to be hurting. Um, just got to be careful he doesn't come out. And with the time to kill being so fast in, in PUBG, you, you know, you may think you've got the advantage, but if someone can get headshots... There you go. So the colonel finishes him off uh, into the blue. And, um, yeah, very good, very good. So now we've got to head west. Now, what's happened here is you can't see it on the mini-map, but the circle is is off in this direction over here, so we've got a long way to go. And this is one of those areas of Miramar where there is an awful lot of open space. Now, as you can see, I'm scanning here, because I know these guys have got to push across the bridge. Um, and me and the colonel are kind of going, OK, but right, there we go. So, so you can see how far we, we, we're basically almost on the farthest side of the circle. The advantage we have is we're on the quiet side of the circle, but we are very exposed. And what you'll see now is you'll – so I just put a dot down in the middle of the circle so I know which direction we should be going. So what I'm trying to do here is just keep an eye on these guys so when they push across the bridge, we'll be aware of that that's about to happen. And then I'm just trying to use the spotting scope just to, just to look on people who may be on our flanks, who may be – in front of us, just to give us a heads up, because um, the, the, the big danger at this stage of the game, when you're so far from the blue, um, is that the blue really hurts, so if you get caught in it, it's going to gonna chunk you, and as soon as you get involved in a, especially a medium to long range gunfight, it's going to slow you down. Now this is important, so what we spot here now is these guys who are directly in front of us on our way into the blue are in this house, so it's like, oh great, we don't want to have to try and engage these guys, they've got cover you know this that's almost like a nightmare situation that sort of situation what you're really looking for is have you got smokes to make yourself cover is there a vehicle where you can just jump in and go this is what we're really looking for now is there a vehicle is the vehicle so we can we can bypass these guys um, again using the spotting scope just to just to scan around quickly is there anybody on our flanks um just keeping an eye on how far we are away now what happens here these guys who are in this house do something interesting in the fact that they kind of make the correct tactical decision they go up the hill. So they're going for the high ground. However, what you could argue is that they're moving towards a busier side of the circle. Maybe they're looking for kills. Uh, who knows? Um, but but bear, in, bear that in mind. You know, the high ground is always good, but you've always got to think, where is the busy side of the circle? Where is the quiet side of the circle? What is my aim now? You know, is my aim to avoid other players, to get into that top 10, to give a chance of winning that chicken dinner? Or is it to uh, to engage and, and get kills? So using adrenaline syringe, getting boosted up. Again, we're late game, 16 players left alive. Going into the blue, want that automatic healing, and I want to be able to run a little bit faster. Looking out for these guys on the left, I'm not actually what, I'm sure what happens. It'll be interesting to see if they if they do die to the blue, because we don't, don't see them coming across. And then very, very luckily, um, there's a uh, excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. We find a little buggy, which is which is really going to help us out. We would have probably been okay. We would have probably made it okay, but again, it's good to be able to get safe um, and still have a reasonable amount of health left, um, especially if anybody had um, decided to uh, engage us at this point. But because we're on the road and we're below this cliff face, we're actually fairly safe. In fact, there we go. There's someone dying to the play zone. So I bet that was the guys who were on the other side of the bridge and didn't make it across. An example of where having a vehicle is so important in late game. Excuse me. Um, and basically what happens next is, let's jump forward to the last five minutes, is we keep playing the eastern side of the circle. Um, and if we look, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see, let's go, we can go full screen now, I think, can we? You'll see... That there's the road. That's kind of where we were, and we've moved up to here. Now we can hear gunfire to our north and to our northwest. 
Again, tactically, we're, we're low. And the big problem with that is, obviously, with third person is enemies can see over the top of the cover and see you. So what you'll see a lot of the time, you'll see me in this position, where I'm down here blocking the view of potentially someone over the other side, but I can peek over the top. The colonel's um, moving ahead of me a little bit. Just looking around, looking around, getting the spotting scope out. The idea of using the spotting scope is just to see whether perhaps I can spot someone who's like hidden behind a tree or behind a rock or in some shadows that I normally wouldn't see, and I can scan much, much faster. Um, so there's eight people left alive. So again, looking around. So the circles are going to be coming in, getting boosted. At this stage of the game, you, if you've got enough boost, try and stay with full boost almost all the time. Now this is where I put the hollow onto the scar. And I'm like, okay, we're probably going to be engaging people at close range. Um, right, so there's a guy up on this hill now. Just as I should, you know, take this uh, six times off. So get some damage into that guy. Don't get the kill. I would be, you know, if I had a bolt action rifle or maybe a, a marksman rifle, maybe I could have got the kill. But we put some damage into him. We have um, damaged his vest a little bit. Um, you could argue, was it a good idea? Because we gave away our position. Uh, good aid going out. May well get a, a lucky kill. Um, don't. So, so here we have it. We're sort of engaging this guy. So Colonel gets the uh, gets the, the kill on that guy. Um, we're taking a few hits though. I took a few hits, so I dropped down. But again, using third person to peek around the cover. Uh, the circle's coming in. No need to push. Now, now this is where things get get interesting. So up the hill is out. The little ledge we're on here is in. And also down below is in. So this, so if we think after this circle, um, you know things things it could it could go either way. And sometimes it's about that decision about do you go high, do you go low, do you go around. So we try and stay where we are for as long as possible because we've got good. You know this is good cover. You know we're just peeking around, and we know you know we can hear the, the, the gunfire that was to our north and to our northwest so we know people are around here and hopefully they're going to start bumping into each other so we stay here and then instead of dropping down we decide to loop around the top boosting up for that automatic heal over time seven left still got a minute left to go Looking at a third person. Listening out. Communicating. You can't hear the chat in these videos, but you know, we're talking talking to each other all the time. Do you see anything? Still using the spot and scope. But people are being very sneaky and using third person. An interesting thing with the sp spotting scope is that um, when you spot someone and it goes red, your teammates can see that um, ping physically on the map in front of them you know through through cover okay so now see where the colonel is so the colonel's behind that cover there so what i'm going to do is i'm flanking round the top of the circle looking for enemies because i've got a decent amount of um cover here just to see you know c can we catch people coming out of the blue the blue really hurts at this stage um even if you're wearing a jammer pack it doesn't last very long so 10 seconds to go Having a quick peek over here. So now it's kind of doing the sweep around the top. Is any again that that look there was to just to catch people who were spiraling in, you know, behind us. It's a classic tactic. Just watching out for that flank. Aim down sight. So this is this is classic Call of Duty centering here, keeping your Keeping your scopes where the enemies may well be coming. Blue's almost in. Here they go. Right, so that so they've then appeared, this other team, right in front of us. So I get a few bullets into that guy. Right. Loop round. Not one. Fall back. Colonel gets the other. So now we've got five alive. Now you can. <laughs> this is really funny. So I think. 
So, so a C4 gets thrown. So we, we run backwards and get down. And then another C4 gets thrown or a grenade. Yeah, and kills another player. So we're down to four. So it's two versus two now. So it's it's either you know two v one v one or two v two. So the colonel pushes forward just to keep an eye out. Smokes are going down over it. I see this guy. He backs off. So I now reload and I do the classic flank around. Whenever you engage anybody in PUBG where it's not decisive decisive engagement, where you don't kill the person, it's very important that you move, especially in third person. Because if you engage them in the same place as well, they could well be pre-aiming exactly where your head is about to be. And also uh, pre-firing, which is even worse. Well, they'll start firing as they hear you coming over the um, ridge and then, then you're just dead. So I swoop around this way. Um, and what you'll see, the engage, so uh, the colonel's now firing at the other guy. They're throwing grenades, so I come round. And what you'll s watch where this guy is here. Now look where he's. So can you see which way he's running into the circle towards the colonel who was shooting at him? And by me flanking around the side, I can now engage him. The danger, obviously, is where's his teammate or where's the other player. Um, but you know, this gives me an e gives me an easy knock. Um, so he's down. Now the colonel's down now. So his mate has now got the colonel. So this is where things get quite funny. Now there's a load of smokes gone down. And generally, you tend to throw smokes down, you know, when you're going to revive a teammate. So his teammate is there, and his teammate will be t saying, "Look, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there." And the colonel was telling me, um, "He's in the smoke," and I thought he was in the smoke as well. So watch what I do. So I come down here, and I'm thinking, "Right, he's in the smoke, he's in the smoke." I, I need to keep moving because as you come to the edge of the smoke, you can kind of see through it, and I don't want him to get an easy kill. So I run all the way down. Now, let me tell you where he actually is. He's actually below me, further down the hill. Now, the only thing I can think is that when he had the engagement with the colonel, the colonel got lots of bullets into him, and he's healing up down the down the hill, because because he could have probably shot me in the back there. So he sends out a stun grenade there. It must have been a far away. More stuff's going down. Blue's coming in. I'm like, where is this guy? So I'm looking around. He's in the. So you know, I'm. Let's see if we can. So now, he's. I don't see him in during the game, but he's there. I think he's throwing something, isn't he there? But I still think he's in, he's, he's in the smoke. So I'm looking towards the smoke, looking towards the smoke. And then he starts shooting at me. And obviously straight away I can hear he's to my left. And then this is where you see, this is where you see the, um, the power of the scar. Where, you know, it just, just takes him out. Where that guy had, had all the advantages. Um, he was, um, I was facing the wrong way. He got the first bullets in. Um, I was, I guess, I was sprinting, so that, that it may have been difficult to stay stay on target. But again, I, I flip round, and um, I uh, the scar sort of uh, takes him out too sweet, as the barrel would would as well. So there we go. Hopefully, this tactics and analysis strategy video has been useful. If you're a beginner to PUBG, you've kind of seen how we jump far to avoid enemies, do that big hard shift where we come across almost the whole north to south. Um, part of Miramar to get onto the quiet side of the circle, moving on foot, foot, using the spot scope. Um, I think it's, it's quite interesting. I think it's going to be great in squads. Um, and then just tickling the side of the circle as we're coming in, watching our flanks, and then getting a nice chicken dinner at the end. So there we go. If you found the video useful, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I will, of course, see you again soon.